So I have some games for you for St Paddy's Day for the highest stages. So these are for the swimmers that are pretty much swimming independently by themselves, especially 25 meters. Um, they are, they understand uh, the, the basics of treading water and you know, you're sort of uh, teaching them the basics of sculling and you know, those type of water polo movements and maybe you're doing a little bit of synchronized swimming type of moves and things like that. So these games here today will actually, you know, uh, help you with practicing those skills so let's get going first um, there are some resources online for you to purchase um, where everything is basically done for you. Um, so in one of my other videos somewhere, <laughs> um, you'll find the link of where uh, for the preschoolers and the parent and toddlers and the younger children of where all the different sort of activities are set up and resources are there for you to print off and use and use as templates. So with the older stages, I have five games of where you could use. So you can always use the ones that you don't use this week for next year and so therefore you've got a number of different ones to choose from so the first one I'm going to go through is called Lucky Charms and I'm looking here because I've got my activity card here so I want to make sure that you have all the information and um, so on this one basically the swimmers um, can be in teams um, or you can play this individually um, the equipment that you need are noodles, um, you don't have to have noodles, but they're there for those that maybe get tired from doing treading water. Um, you have a big float, so if you have got a big float, if you don't have a big float, then improvise maybe with some kickboards or things like that. So try and improvise with that. Um, you'll also need some lucky charms or gold or anything, any items, and I'll go through a couple of options, um, that is relative to your group that you're teaching. So it depends on size, um, you know, uh, whether they sink down, whether they float and so forth. So just think about which group you might want to do this, this game for. And then you'll need some type of container or bowls. And again, depending on what you have or what you want to spend money on. I've had these for absolute years where they are so popular. So, um, and again, you get them in a massive pack um, uh, of where you get uh, maybe between 10 and 12, I think, that come. Or you've got buckets or you've got your bowls here as well, depending on what you want to use as a container. Um, so, swimmers can be in teams or they can do this individually. And the lucky charms are on top of the big float, so you place. So I have, for instance, here a couple of things that you can use. Um, I've got these these buttons here that are really cool and good, uh, uh, amazing. So I've say, for instance, these are the lucky charms. You might want to choose to just do all yellow, or you can just do a mix of colours. That's absolutely fine. Um, or you've got things like you can use um, big. Um, big pom-poms or I've got these coins so just think about what you may want to use there's no right or wrong way but they're going to be the gold or the lucky charm so pretty much lucky charms um, and that's, that's what I've cho chosen to have they're going to be they're going to be on the big float and basically the swimmers are going to be located at the other end so you've got the float one end the swimmers are the other end okay um, and yes, the floats might move around, but that's really good because that means when they're swimming, they have to spot where they're swimming. So it's a little bit of a water polo, but again, it's a water safety um, of where they're lifting their head to spot where things are. So it's actually, again, a really good uh, way of practicing these types of things. So it's great that if the float does move, um, that is a, an added bonus. But you also don't want to make sure that the, the float moves too close because you want the swimmers to obviously still then swim a distance to be able to take part in the game. <laughs> so if it goes past, so hard, you know, halfway point, then make sure that the uh, float is then moved back. Maybe you move back or put a cone out to say if it goes past the cone that we just have to re uh, rejig our stuff. <laughs> um, and basically, and also you have a leprechaun that is going to be, so one of the swimmers have said, yeah, I'll be the leprechaun, and they're going to be guarding the Lucky Charms. 
So they're going to be in front of the new, uh, in front of the big float, and they're going to be uh, making sure that their job is is to try and make sure that none of the swimmers are able to get any of the lucky charms, or, or get past to be able to get them. So the swimmers on the other end, they have to try their best to get past the leprechaun in order to go and choose that. You can even have a mix of these things that may be worth certain points. You know, maybe the bigger ones are less. Uh, maybe one point then you've got again it, then it goes so maybe that's two points and these are um, sorry these are 1.2 points and then maybe three points for the smaller ones and so you can do a little bit of variation there and they then have to swim those back so you might want to determine what stroke they do how they're able to get them back are they only able to use one hand as a paddle stroke uh, do they have to hold them between their toes do they have to balance them on their heads have a think about different variations that they can move the the object back and going down, of course, they can do full stroke. So again, you can determine whether it's front crawl, back stroke, or maybe choice. And uh, maybe they want to skull feet first, head first. Maybe you want to do a water polo, um, you know, paddle stroke, and so forth. Um, and then, and then they then go down, collect their charms, try and get past the leprechaun, and they get uh, onto the well, they literally get onto it, but they take what's on the float and then take it back to their pots. So if you're using bigger, then you might want to have bigger pots. But, um, you know, they still can go next to the pots, even if you've got something like this anyway. So that's fine. Um, basically, if they are in teams, then it's the first team to fill their pots. So if you are doing pot, uh, teams, then you might want to do a bigger pot. If they're doing it individually, you might want to do it smaller. So it's, um, you know, for them. And if they are individual, then you can specify how many they have to collect. So it's the first person to either get a point system or the first person to get, say, five lucky charms or three lucky charms, depending on how many times that you're wanting them to swim down. Maybe they're working on, uh, on IM and you've got four. So it's the first person to do the full IM um, with the four strokes to get uh, their lucky charms. Um, and so they can't take... Um, you can add in them that they can only take one at a time. So they have to go down four times in order to get the four. Um, and so add that bit in. Um, and if the leprechaun, so if the person that is the leprechaun that's trying to stop them, if they tag them, then they have to drop or, or put back their lucky charm that they did get. Um, if they didn't get there yet, that's fine. Then they have to swim back. So if they're in a team, they have to go to the back. Um, or if they are doing or if you're doing this individually, then they just start again. <laughs> so they go back to where they started and then push off and um, start fresh. So that is Lucky Charms. <laughs> it's a really good game. Um, other things that you can maybe, you know, maybe they're wanting to try and swim underneath. Maybe they come in from a different direction. Maybe you add in two leprechauns, depending if you, you know, got a bigger team to make it a little bit harder. Maybe they have to swim around first before they then are able to get the, the, the lucky charms. Um, so, you know, a couple of different things there that you can also add in. Have fun. Next game is Pot of Gold. And the equipment that you need are noodles, big floats, uh, gold, which we're actually using yellow balls. Um, which is the gold and a large container for the gold. So for this, you'll need to have a bucket that is quite big. So these ones will be a bit too small. So you need a larger surface area. So maybe you have a you know bucket for the garden or what have you in a gardening bucket, or maybe like a, a chlorine um, tub or what have you. Maybe you've got something that's that's large enough that you just need to have a little bit of a, a larger surface area. So have a think. So each swimmer, they have, um, you know, between three and five gold pieces, which are their balls. They have to make sure that they keep their balls that are theirs with them. So again, this is uh, adding a little bit of, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, extra skills set in there to try and keep the balls contained <laughs> so they don't go off. Um, and they'll be treading water. And like I said before, if they're at the point where they get tired a little bit sooner, they can't put their feet down, uh, they, will, they can use a noodle, they can either sit on it like a swing or they can sit on it like a seahorse. 
Um, with their balls then, or with their pot, their gold, they then have to throw the gold into the pot. So they're going to be located around. You can specify a certain distance. Um, again, the 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 pit the ball pit balls tend to be quite light so you can't really throw them too far um but you know just please use your uh, sort of teacher common sense as to you know how you conduct this you don't want them too close and you don't want them to be sort of um firing at each other but the aim of the game is they have to get all of their pieces of gold into the bucket and each piece of each ball is represents a point so each time they get their gold in they get a point if the ball or the pot or the gold misses the pot, then that is open then for the other swimmers to collect their piece of gold and then use as theirs to build their point score. So if I've missed three times and I've got two balls left, then I only got an opportunity of getting two points. Whereas there are other swimmers that could potentially have all of my three balls that I've missed, or they can take one or two and so forth. So it's open. And if they if I've run out of all five balls, I can then wait until somebody else potentially misses to be able to then use their ball to get in and get some points myself. So that is pot of gold. I'm just going to double check because I have all of these games that is here to purchase for you. So you don't need to be furiously writing this down. Different ways you can either, uh, um, the game ends if there are certain amounts of points scored and that's the winner. So first person to get three points, done. One, you know, you can write it, have even a scoreboard if you want to. <laughs> um, and or you can do it of uh, the amount of, uh, or it can be timed. So you can say you can do it for one minute. We're going to try and you're going to try and get as many points as possible um, in that time frame. So two different variations there. If you can think of any, let me know. Write in the comments below of, of any type of variations that you can think of for that one. Enjoy Pot of Gold. Uh, next game is called the uh, Leprechaun Chase. So you have, and to start with, you have one leprechaun. So one swimmer that's decided they're wanting to be the leprechaun, they are the tagger. And you have one swimmer that what I'm calling a floating shamrock. <laughs> they're not literally floating, but they are floating shamrock. You will have, the other swimmers, depending on how many that you have, um, they will actually be in pairs and they're going to be having a noodle each and they're both going to be sitting on the noodle and they're going to be shamrocks and they're going to be a shamrock tray um shamrock chain <laughs> so the end of the game is that the leprechaun has to chase the floating shamrock and have to tag them before they get to the shamrock chain so the people on the swimmers that are on the noodles if the floating shamrock gets to one of the uh, shamrock chains and starts to get sit onto the noodle, one of the, probably preferably the front one because it would be easier, they will get off the noodle and then they become the floating shamrock where the leprechaun then has to then start chasing that person. They then have to try and find another shamrock train chain to join. So then they run out before the leprechaun chases and, and tags them. So then it moves on and on. So then you get on the chain, one person gets off it and then so forth. So um, again, this can be timed. It could be that uh, as soon as the leprechaun tags the floating shamrock, the game stops and then you change hands of who's going to be the leprechaun. Um, or it could be that you have an X amount of um, uh, tags that you get that the, the leprechaun does uh, and where the game is then stopped. So the first three tags and then they stop, change hands. So it just depends on how many want to be the taggers. Um, from my experience, they all pretty much want to have a go at being the leprechaun or the tagger. Um, so therefore, you know, uh, uh, you try and turn over the game quite quickly. But uh, another great game for them called the leprechaun chase. Another game is called Lucky Seven. <laughs> so unless you need um, some shamrocks, so if you have used these for the preschoolers, parent, toddlers, then you already have these. If you don't have these, then uh, there's a template that comes with this anyway, so you can use these. Um, and you'll need some green hoops. 
and the diving hoops basically green preferably just to keep it within the theme um, but not necessarily needing it because you can just call them the, the shamrocks anyway so what you're going to do is you're going to place a number of these different shamrocks around and you're going to mix it up with your pool space that you have and what you work with just try and be as creative as possible i have done a whole workshop actually about using your pool space and your environment the best that you can um, i've given all those ideas for you so i'm not going to do this on this video so you're going to place them all around where you want to go um, and of course put the ones that are underneath the water down in underneath the water you can put them all the way at the other end or you can spot them out it depends on you can have a point system the closest the less points furthest away you can have the higher points so forth so they actually you can do this as a team event or a team like sort of relay or you can have these individually so depending on the numbers of the swimmers that you have and basically you're going to have uh, the sinkable ones are going to have more point value than the ones that are going to be the float these floating ones um, so, and it's going to be the first team that gets to seven points and then the game is over. There are a number of different variations um, and they are on your pack if you want to go through those. Enjoy lucky seven. The next game is the St Paddy's Heist and you'll need a big float or individual kickboards and you'll need some gold. So um, again, you can use things like uh, these buttons as, as gold or you can use, you know, like I've mentioned in other of the other games that I've been going through is the pom-poms um, or I use these uh, these coins as well. But um, you can be as creative as you want, depending on, um, of course, what you already have or if you're wanting to purchase anything. Um, and the gold is actually located on the float, which is called the rainbow. And they are in the middle of the pool space that you have. Um, you're going to have swimmers on one end and the other end. So the rainbow is in the middle, team A, team B. When you say the teacher get the gold, they then have to one swimmer at a time, <laughs> otherwise you can have loads of them, or you can do pairs, you can do twos going at one time if you want to, if they're doing it individually. Um, but if they're doing it as a team, the first team player goes and they're going to go and collect as, as much gold as they can and take it back. So you're going to be having either, you know, these type of pots or these type of pots, or you can have your bowl again, depending on what you want to use. And they get as many uh, coins as possible. You can put a limited amount on the big float. You can put as many out as you want to. Just think as many as you put out, they may sink down and you have to go and get. <laughs> so just bear that in mind. Um, and but they all need to go down and collect so they need to then think of strategically and tactically how many of these coins that they're wanting to get um, because you don't they've got to carry them back so they have to think about if they're just going to grab a handful and then they'll be able to swim back because they might be able to swim back faster or they might want to take a little bit longer to swim back but they take more so they have to think as a team of how to get this gold back First person obviously goes and get their gold, they swim it back, then the next swimmer goes. So it could be that you go until all the gold is gone and it's the team that has or the person that has the most gold. Um, or it could be timed. So you do, you know, 30 seconds, one minute or a minute and a half of where they go is get as much. And then it, the winners are the team with the most gold <laughs> at the end of the rainbow, from the rainbow. <laughs> And they can be little leprechauns if you want. They can pretend to be little leprechauns. If you can think of any others, let me know. But um, that's St. Paddy's Heist. Enjoy! Mm -hmm.